Hi viewers, welcome to a new episode of Business Compass. And as you know, Business Compass, we coach, we nurture, and we support small businesses and help them to become big businesses. And my name is Charlotte Say, and as you know, Business Compass is created and produced by Fiducia Services Limited. On today's episode, we have a really exciting episode for you, very new kind of business. We're looking at the grocery delivery business in Ghana, and it's our pleasure to have Big Sam's in the studio. And also in the studio with me are two of my regular, regular experts, fantastic people. Mrs. Petra Abba Samoa, a sales and marketing consultant, also a writer. And Petra, thank you for coming here again week after week. Thank you very much for having me. And thank you. And we also have Mr. Frank Abbe, who is a manager with the Deal Advisory Services of KPMG. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Charlotte. I'm glad to be here to help with this business. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we would introduce you to the founder of Big Sam's Market. My name is Elsline Jose Samson. Big Sam's Market is a grocery delivery service here in Accra, Ghana. We shop, package and deliver your groceries to you right at your doorstep. Back in 2014, I think, I came across the words grocery delivery during the food packaging research at the Anaga. And I decided to research more about it because I had never heard it. Um, I realized there wasn't any information or data in Ghana. And even in Africa, I found some data in Nigeria and South Africa. So I decided to do more about it because my mom used to sell food stuff. So I consulted her and that's how it started. I was very busy back then. So I felt if even as a student, I'm not able to go to the market and buy groceries. I'm sure there are others out there who need my help. Officially, we've been doing it for four years. Big Sam started the official of the in 2017. I like color and the food itself attracts me. And basic, um, I didn't like going to the market. My mom was so surprised that I do this. And so me not liking it, meeting other people who didn't. And I like to do stuff that are new and different. I like to set things. So I, when I realized that it wasn't something that was being done here, I wanted to really give it a try. Even though I told her, I really wanted to make this business work. Biggest challenge I would say is perception and marketing. Perception being people think um, services like this are expensive, which we are actually very affordable because I would, I, we want you to shop more from us. So we give you competitive prices. So the perception, and also marketing, you know, um, which I feel we should work on as a business. So if it's a challenge, you have to cross it, you have to break that barrier. I believe that with the panelists or with the experienced people I'm going to meet, um, I'll know how I can market my products very well. I would also know how I can put my financial records and everything in place. Um, how to raise funds you know, because the business at a stage where we feel we have to expand and we are really looking forward to raising funds to expand the business. Welcome back viewers and like I said today on Business Compass we're looking at the grocery delivery service um, in Ghana and it's my pleasure to have Miss Elsie Samson, also known as Adra Agogloshi. Welcome, Elsie. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. I'm glad so I'm tell, here. tell us about your business. How did you start? So and why? Big Sam's um, goes way back to 2013, 2014, mm. when I came across the words during the food packaging project in school. Okay. Yes, so I researched more and I didn't have any data um, 
for the business in Ghana. Um, I found one in Nigeria, okay. and then but mo most of them were from the US, the UK. So I decided to research more, and then I said, okay, let me start this. I'm in school. I'm allowed to make mistakes. Exactly. So let me have a pilot study here and see how it will be received. So I did my first pilots back in school. So you used the people on campus yes, as your market? my mates. I, I, okay. I did some flyers, shared it with them. It was strange. They didn't understand. A lot of them So basically what you were offering them was that you would do their grocery shopping groceries, for them? Groceries, yes. Okay. But I believe it was, it was a wrong timing because I was doing my project then. So combining that and projects, um, mm -hmm. it didn't work. I failed that one <laughs> back in school. Yes. And then when I came back um, after national, after school, I came home. I said, well, let me try this in Accra too, because Accra is big and I'm sure a lot of people will need the service. Mm. But what I think I also didn't do then is, you know, when it's a new service, it's a Western service. The average Ghanaian would want to go and pick their groceries, select, because they don't think you do the best shopping for them. And they don't understand the service. You're saying grocery delivery. What is groceries? Some people think groceries is just um, Milo. <coughs> Sorry. Some will think groceries is just Milo, Nido. So you have to bring it to the Ghanaian way. And that's when I came with the um, phrase quality groceries at Agbo Bloshi prices. Okay. So the Agbo Bloshi sold us. And then oh. I changed my... So now they understood what you yes. were offering. Okay. I changed my social media personally to Aja Bubulushi. Okay. So people were asking, why Aja Bubulushi? Who is this? What is this? Who are and if you hear Bubulushi, food stuff comes to mind. Yeah. So it's, it started selling from there. Oh, fantastic. I'm, I'm, I, I'm very excited about the way you started. And you're bringing up a lot of things in terms of starting a business at the time that your schedule you're caught up with your project, so yes. it doesn't even enable you to build the yes. business. But I also like the fact that you started from the circle you were in, so you could learn. And then you now started again. So when you started in 2015, you said the clients didn't understand. Yes. So you need to build some awareness. Yes. Um, so did you stop it and then you restarted again? So in 2015, yes, I stopped. And then you started? And I started again. With the Adria Bubloshi? Officially in 2017. Okay. But that's really wonderful. And yes. it's, it's, it just shows that really failure is path on the pathway to success. Yes. Because you, you learned from each time it didn't quite work out. You, you took the lessons from it. Yes. And you used it to repackage the business. And there's so much to learn from this. Because I think a lot of times either we, we continue in a very headstrong manner because we are passionate about it that... I'm going to continue. Yes. And you think, because we say that um, entrepreneurs have to be resilient, we think that's resilience, but it's not. And then the other thing is being able to step back and say, I'm going to restart all over again. And you did that twice. Yes. And so you started in 2017, and it's been a different trajectory since then. Since then. Now it's stable. Yes. It's doing well. Yes. Fantastic. Um, okay. So how many staff do you have? Now I have three permanent staff, excluding me. Three permanent? Yes. And you have part-time? Part-time, yes. How does that work? Um, so there are seasons where there are lots of orders, and the three, the four of us cannot handle it. Okay. So we have people we call students. Um, oh, good. Yes. So for the students, it's like a part-time gig? Yes. Fantastic. They've been How many of them do you take on? We have three that we go to. So they are there, knowing it's like contract. They can be called on at any time, too. Yes. Okay. Lovely. Oh. And um, so where do you want us to start? Should we start looking at you? You're, you're registered as a sole proprietorship, and that's fine, actually, for what you're doing. Uh, I don't see any issues there. I think that's the right kind of registration for you. Um, little or no um, legal requirements. Um, in your line of business, I really don't see a lot of liability issues. You're just doing grocery. You're like the intermediary. You pick groceries. Yes. So you're not carrying 
liability. So I think I think that really works for where you are now. Okay. If you need to expand, then we may have to look at that. But okay. I know Frank has been studying your numbers. And do you want us to go into your numbers? <laughs> yes, please. But before we go into your numbers, I think we should look at your vision. What is your vision for this business? Because that would, dis that would determine where we're going with the discussion. What's your vision point? First, I, I want us to be a household name, like a brand where we have Melcom. Okay. We have ShopRite. Big uh -huh. Sam's Market should be the household name for grocery delivery. Okay. Yes. And what does that mean for you? Because you didn't set up the business to become a household name. Frank, I know Frank is going to give you a speech <laughs> about the purpose of <laughs> your business, but after that, then what? So we're calling, oh, Big Sam's, Big Sam's, and you're not making money. What's, what's the point? So after that, we want to, the vision is to be able to deliver groceries in about six, uh, three to six hours in a day. So your so turnaround move, time. Yes, we move from 24 hours and 12 hours okay. to three to six hours. Okay. Yes. What else? And then um, our outlets. So mm -hmm. the advantage of the outlet is now, like we are in Chado now, and we give free delivery to clients in Chado. And that has raised our client base in Chado. Yes. We have a lot of them. because so they want more outlets. Yes. So, so that, that we can, can also do yes, quicker delivery deliveries. can go down and then... We will give them quick But do you track where your orders are coming from so that at least you, you have a sense of where your clientele is concentrated? Yes, yes. You're doing that? We take notes of their locations. Okay. Because we have all that, the details. So we know the number of people from Spintes. We know those from Chado. We know the orders we get so from So you have Tema. the data? Yes. So now we need to also figure out with you how to translate that data into knowledge that you can actually use to improve okay. the business. Okay. But I, I'm still not seeing a big vision. I'm seeing like target. You want to m move to a three to six hour turnaround. You want to um, be a household brand. I'm not seeing a big, you know, the, the vision that makes you get out of bed every day. Like what's a big driving thing that this is where I want to get to? Um, I don't know if I say that the number of supplies we do. Mm -hmm. We would want to move from our average of 20 now a day to 100. 20 a day too. It's not ambitious enough. I, we can do better than this. We can do it, but I, it's time. We yeah, can so we're going to put a time frame to the vision. Okay, if, if there's a time the frame, vision. usually we do um, yearly. So mm. from for the end of this year, realistically, we would like to do 50 a, a day. day. Yes. Okay. The work itself is, is a lot. Okay, so... <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yes, but you want to have... Okay, let's start from... You want to do 100 a day. I, I think it's not ambitious enough, though. Okay. Just looking at your current numbers. So let's say you want to move to... You are now at 20 a day. You want to move to 100 a day. 100 a day is um, 500 a week. A week, yes. That's how many in a month? 2,000. 2,000. 2,000 in a month. Times 12 is 24,000 in a year. 24,000. So this target of 24,000 deliveries in a year, mm. is it for, by, by, we're in 2021, is it by 2025, is it by 2023, is it by the end of 2021? 2023. 2023. So that's your three year, whatever. Okay. Yeah. So 24,000 by 2023. That's our overriding vision. Okay, so now we'll take a break. And when we come back, we'll look at your numbers, but we'll situate your numbers within this vision and see what it's going to take to get you there. Okay. And then we'll also look at the customer service issues, the marketing issues, okay. and see how we can all get to this point of 24,000 deliveries in 2023. I think it may be earlier, but let's see what the numbers say. So we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, We'll look at Adria Gugloish's numbers and how we can get her bigger. This compass, and we're talking with Big Sam's Market, and we're looking at the grocery delivery market in Ghana. So, Elsie, we are we were talking about your vision, 
and we came we got to the point of 24,000 deliveries in a year and you say you can do this by 2023 fine what can you do by 2025 I still think this is not I want the, the one that makes you jump out of bed every you know and I want something we can put in um, a picture format that you can be staring at it and it's driving you because you want to get there what's the big vision in five years so the big vision is to have our trucks ah <laughs> trucks <laughs> yes mm -hmm. move to the rural areas where the, go. the the plants are grown directly fresh from source um get supplies even the processed one directly to our warehouses hmm now we're talking trucks and warehouses <laughs> yes. i love this and then you know there's this um the idea of the mobile market service if you're not coming to us, we will come to you. So I can be sitting at home and your truck appears. Yes. I call you, you come with your truck and I pick my stuff. Exactly. Now we're talking. <laughs> now we're talking. I love this one. I love this vision. And this is by when? This is by 2025. We uh, you know I'm going to be on you. Yes, I'm not please letting do. This. I'm going to be on you. Oh, I love this vision. Okay. Yeah, now I can hand over to you. Yeah, <laughs> and to, to add to that, the vision should be also broader, although these ones we've put timelines to mm -hmm. them, is that that thing that uh, stipulates why the organization exists. So if you ask me to craft that long-term vision for this organization, I'll say it should be the name that comes to mind when anybody thinks of food. Food. food stuff, yeah. I, I want to cook. Where do I get my supplies? Then big, big sums should come to mind before they think of oh okay then if I go to I get big sounds to do it for me if they are not there then maybe I have to go to the market mm -hmm. you know so that broader We're thing gonna that have guys trucks you will always be there yeah. yes and, and again <laughs> a talk about trucks came in so the trucks uh, again instead of sometimes just moving I'm a finance guy moving to over mm -hmm. for all over driving all mm -hmm. over for people it's expensive to run these trucks so you based on your where you think your customer base is situate you, you situate it there mm -hmm. and you have like motorbikes or other lighter means of transport distributes yes. to to people so i mean that's a good uh, vision now we have a <laughs> process to have so i appreciate i appreciate that and the clarity with which you have articulated that. but now you're going to start working back you're going to put it there how many trucks yes. we put a timeline by 2025 so that would now tell you by 2024, if I want to have five trucks by 2025, it means by 2024, maybe I should have two mm -hmm. or one. Because mm -hmm. it actually gets easier as you advance. Then yeah. by 2023, it means I should have 10 motorbikes. By 2022, this is what I should have. Yeah. Now you're going to work back and then you can now start breaking it down in the next 12 months on a monthly basis. Okay. What target should you be hitting? Mm -hmm. So if you know for you to do that, it's 50,000 deliveries a day. And by 2023, you're doing 24,000 deliveries. It means that by 2022, maybe you should be doing like 18,000. Mm -hmm. By 2020, end of 2021, it means you should be hitting 10,000 plus. Mm -hmm. So that drives you and your team now. And you should, in fact, you can actually print these numbers or put pictures of the trucks. Okay. You are a digital commerce person. Yes. So do pictures of the trucks with big sums on it and the motorbikes and just put it all over. You guys are looking at it every day. Thank it is you. driving you. That's what you need. Mm. The other bit also to add to that before you come to your numbers is that this idea, if you, it's, I think it's something that people can easily replicate. Mm -hmm. So you've got to move very fast yes. and build that brand equity, which is the name that people it comes to mind first mm -hmm. so that by the time people replicate so that name is what comes yeah, to so people's top. mind mm -hmm. first yeah so i mean i've looked at your numbers and i understand you really didn't have good records until june yes. okay. when you got the services of uh, an accountant to, to to help you right yes, and when i look at it now from june to now i see some impressive trends i don't mm. know you might have appreciated it your, yourself yes. I, I know your <laughs> have you been tracking it yes that's good yeah so I know you're at least your half year to December, what you made. And that is something that will make an investor sort of a bit more attracted to you. I computed just high level some ratios. Your gross profits is something that is 
a bit above the average business. Very okay. good. Okay. Your net we can profit buy our trucks. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> yeah. So the net profit margin is also uh, above what I see in the average are you business. Get, are you paid? Yes, I'm paid. Okay. okay. So and they are reinvesting into the business. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so with all this, we're just on one page. This is very small, mm -hmm. basic mm -hmm. um, sort of number capturing. I can say that if you even gave this to an investor, they would, it will it will ignite some interest okay. In, okay. in you because you have some numbers that shows some profit numbers that I think is sustainable. Okay. You have top lines that shows growth. Okay, so the investor may be interested. Beyond the investor, yourself, I think you can see that in the month of August, things dipped yes. a bit. Yes. In the month of November, things dipped a bit. Do you know why this happened? So um, in August, there was this issue of students going back, um, lockdown, people going back to work. Mm -hmm. So they have to spend on transportation and all that. So we made that observation there. Mm -hmm. And in December, also, the next ob observation we make uh, in November, mm -hmm. we realized that people lay back to shop in December. Okay. Oh, they, yes. were, they wanted to stock up yes. in December. Because okay. we, we post maybe on WhatsApp status and um, broadcast, and you get the feedback like, hey, I'm, I'll be sending my Christmas shopping in December. But they are not shopping around that time. But you know, this is why it's also good to track numbers, like we've been saying, because then you can follow the trends you can know a bit of more from what the customers are feeling and then as a business you can plan so for instance if we're planning for next year mm -hmm. you would know what to do in those months to either manage it or to boost yes. um, revenue mm -hmm. so that's good mm -hmm. so so that's the benefit of having to to sort of keep keep the numbers the, yeah the numbers okay. so you also made mention of, y you have this division of getting tracks and things like that, and you said you'd want some financing to... No, before you go into that, that, I wanted Petra to come in a bit okay. on yeah. the initial, because I'm also interested in financing the big vision. <laughs> okay. I wanted us to deal with the immediate issues first, then we'll go into that one. Okay. So, um, you're just a breath of fresh air, <laughs> <laughs> I must say. Just listening to her story, yeah. how she started, how she's reinvented the business, it's just really, really a nice feeling for me. Um, because I see that there's so much potential. I, I, I would ask maybe after, how, why this type of business? Okay. Because it's not something that anybody mm -hmm. just gets up to do. But I think that the vision is quite energizing. It's something that you should keep to mm -hmm. and stretch yourself as much as you can. It's exciting that you've been able to carry this from just an idea when you were in school to what it is now. You're, 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 ha you're making good numbers. So <laughs> <laughs> and um, for somebody who works in, in sales and marketing, it's the numbers that makes us happy. <laughs> so if you're making the numbers, obviously you're doing something good. Um, I was very excited to also note that you have a plan for seasonality yes. because that's an area that a lot of businesses struggle with. When the seasonality changes, they either don't have enough stock or they don't know how to manage the increasing demand for their product and then customer dissatisfaction sets in. Mm -hmm. So you keep telling customers, oh, we're sorry, we can't take your orders because you don't have yeah. the human resource or the capacity to meet those needs. Yeah. So it's a very good thing that you also have not just the um, human resource plan to fill that gap, but you, I'm sure you also have plans in terms of stocking. Yes. So that's a good thing. Um, I had questions for you in terms of customer service issues. Because when you're talking about how the business started and saying that sometimes people don't understand or want to go and select themselves, do you ever have situations where because we are so used to doing it ourselves, yes. you then have a, a situation where the person says, no, I don't like the mm. tomatoes looking like that, or that's not the type of garden <laughs> eggs I like. Yes. <laughs> do you, how do you sort things like that Petra, out? I wanted you to tie that in the next segment to actually helping her deal with some of the challenges okay. because she's put there that one of it is the perception one of her challenges that it's um, a best service for the affluent. affluent yeah so I thought you'll tie that to really helping her define her market okay so okay. that we don't just raise the issue but we can give her, give a, her solution. a solution yes okay. and then when you do that in the next segment Frank can also now come and talk about financing the big vision based on the numbers he's seeing and okay the short business history that she has. How do we finance this big vision? So let's take a break and when we come back, we'll look at the two issues, addressing your challenges with marketing 
and also financing your big vision that we've now crafted and i'm very happy about that <laughs> so please stay with us we'll take a break and when we come back we'll look at this too. otherwise known as adra agogloshi <laughs> so which one do you want us to deal with first your customer the so marketing issues yes. okay so petra okay so you you stated that one of the challenges you have is with the perception that your service is for the affluent which is not really a problem. Okay. okay. <laughs> In terms of, um, except you are saying because there's a perception like that, it's limiting your reach to more customers. Mm -hmm. Is that the problem? I, I feel now it's actually not a limit. It's not a limitation. Yes, okay, so we can, we can bench that. Okay. But if that even comes to mind um, in terms of things that you think can be an issue, then the, we should address it. Okay. In terms of think about... What type of image do you want to give to customers when they see what you offer? Mm -hmm. And it's a very important thing that you know the why mm -hmm. to what you're offering and how you're going to articulate that to your customers. So I see that you talk a lot about, um, when I checked out your Instagram page, which is very nicely <laughs> laid out, everything is just on point <laughs> on that page. Um, she, you, you she's a digital comms person. No wonder. So you do all <laughs> the graphic designing yourself. Yes, most of them. Interesting. <laughs> okay. So you, you always project... Um, spend before buy your groceries before you spend all your money mm -hmm. <laughs> which is <laughs> which was very interesting um but you i didn't see you but projecting why that message though um i think she's trying to show that you can save is yes. that it and like we we see a lot of um sales at the end of the month and beginning of the month oh. so people do a lot of shopping Maybe around they plan that, it time. that way yes so the and then it was corona actually changed a lot of things it, it moved us as a business, it shut us up, it made us know that we had a lot of things we were not checking. We corrected a lot of mistakes after that. And then, so it was as part of the time, the season, you know, you don't know when you don't have money. So when you get your money, ask for food, you need it. So shop at the end of the month, the rest of the things, you can do it later. Okay. But as you are talking i see that you have created an image of a particular type of customer in your mind is this customer you're trying to sell to like you are they young um have they just finished school are they so tied to their end of month budgets or are you looking at families with what you have to be able to define that so that your messaging is clear yes. so i got the sense that you're talking to young people um yes. who have but very tight won't work for me yes who have very tight budgets and have to go Every month, checking, mm -hmm. checking, checking, making sure they and get And then there are also people, especially women, who bulk buy at yes. a certain time and yes. it takes them over. So yes. it's really about planning. And planning, mm -hmm. yes. yes. Okay. So then when you're, you're, you're trying to address that issue, I didn't see that you were projecting the issue of convenience and okay. um, the value, time value of money. Yes. Okay. I didn't see those two. Okay. That's, and I think those are opportunities that you yeah. can explore. So instead of just thinking about buying now so you don't have okay. to do it later, think about also how you project the issue of time value of money in terms of we spend a lot of time doing mm -hmm. different things. And food is important, yes. but how do we do that? Um, I know okay, let, me, let me get you right. You're basically telling her that in all their marketing communication, they should be selling their value proposition. Exactly. That doesn't always come out. Yes, okay. yes, exactly. And then you won't have a problem whether yes. people think it's an yes. affluent service or because not. Because whether you're yeah. affluent or not, you you need convenience is convenience important, is important, important to you. And to our, our slogan, our tagline is actually convenience at your doorstep. So I think we should be hammering you on exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I noticed that you don't charge for the delivery. You're just selling the things. We charge for delivery. Yes, but you're charging for the delivery service. Okay. I don't okay. So if I want to buy a bucket of tomatoes and mm -hmm. I go to Agogloshi, I might get it for 30 CDs. Okay. If I buy from you, you're selling to me almost at the same price. Yeah. But, but you have to drive me to Agogloshi. Yes, but I have to drive to Agogloshi. But, but you charge me the delivery service to bring the goods to me. Are you charging me a premium for the service that I don't have to spend my time yes. there yes you pay for the service okay yes. then that's that's a good model yes. as well because then you should be able to make some extra money mm -hmm. on just making my life a bit yes. easier for me yes. but you're not, not charging bit, me a whole lot easier <laughs> if i don't have to go to a good place. i mean and i was so wild yesterday because i said okay how is it that i don't know about this <laughs> how am i still making this so much to, trouble. And, and so much of my life because your time is actually part yes. of your life so really think about 
the segment of the market that you okay. want to focus on. I think a lot of um, upwardly mobile middle class people would really buy into this. Okay. Stretch a bit, okay. let the convenience come out a bit more. And especially for the women who are always asking, how do you find work-life balance? Mm -hmm. This is how you find it, by yeah. outsourcing things that you, you don't necessarily have to do yourself and letting somebody else do it. So you spend your yeah. time doing something else. And get testimonials from people who've used the yes, service. I wrote that down. To, yeah. ent to en entrench the, the fact that this is not something that makes you any less of a, of a virtuous <laughs> woman. <laughs> because there's that burden of, yes. I want to show that I'm doing everything Superwoman. well. <laughs> I'm waking up at 5 a.m. and going to Agbogbloshi. Yes, I can wake up at 5 a.m., but at 5 a.m., I drank Agbogbloshi would have brought my stuff. <laughs> so I don't have to do all of that yes. myself. And it's still nice, it's fresh, it's, it's healthy, it's all... It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's helping me achieve my goal, but I don't do it myself. Mm -hmm. And it's not costing me an arm and a leg extra. Yes. It's still within my reach. So you can project that image very well. In terms okay. of the brand, um, I know that you said you want your, your company to be a household name. Then it means that you need to be very consistent. Okay. okay so your names across all social media platforms should be consistent. Okay. When I Google Big Sams, I see all your nice images. But then I noticed that Facebook has a different name, Instagram has a different name. Okay. You should just be consistent okay. with the name across all the and different And you think platforms. the name, because we need to wrap this and move to financing, you, you think the name Big Sam's works for this business? Um, if it's working for her, <laughs> don't fix it. She's emotionally attached <laughs> to it. <laughs> <laughs> but I felt that it's, it brings up an image of being a man. Mm -hmm. That was my thing. I was like, okay. Well, a young, nice lady, <laughs> Elsie, <laughs> um, want to project that the business is man it really but does i think the other question would be d would your target market feel comfortable with a big sam shopping for them yes that was the question as against an lc shopping, an for, shopping them. for them and remember and frank is going to give you this lecture in a minute mm -hmm. this is a business there's a reason why you're in business yes. and you can be emotionally attached to a name but there are different ways of playing with that. It can become, and you would move to a limited liability entity. It can become the name of the entity. But the brand that people know and sell every day may have to be different to get you to where you want to go. So the big trucks may not have big sums on it. They may have something else that speaks mm. great foodstuffs, healthy, convenience. Mm. And big sums may now be the company behind that it so think about it okay let me bring frank in and i think mm -hmm. let me just make the okay. final comment i think adria agogloshi is a very nice name <laughs> it's and i it didn't want to give her any <laughs> suggestions <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a nice well, you can uh, have it as a tagline it has to be something that you try and project because yes that whole idea of going to agogloshi makes a lot of people feel they are superhuman they are very they <laughs> very are. good <laughs> <laughs> you know so if you can make us feel that yes agbogloshi, the agbogloshi prizes so convenience at agbogloshi prizes you can project that a bit more yes. yeah so um the yeah. with the name yeah. one thing about so let's say um eja or something one thing that's made me pull back mm -hmm. when we started like there wasn't a lot of of this Later, people, it's easy for you to copy. So yeah. you, uh -huh. People start and you, you type ja or no, something ja and you get a lot of people. We did, did we suggest that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so sometimes people suggest like a local name, but the local names... Even big terms may work, but it just may mean a lot mm. more work. But just yeah. all we're saying is Think about it. step back. Don't be emotional about it. Okay. Think back. It's business. Don't get, don't put the emotional over what is going to make you money mm -hmm. and don't be emotionally attached to a name that if it is the challenge you don't want to mm -hmm. let go that's all we're saying okay. i'm not saying take a decision immediately we're okay. just saying take a step back and think through it a bit more great I mean please remind her why she's in business oh <laughs> <laughs> and we You're may have to, to we may have to just do an introduction and we take a break and when we come back you launch into mm -hmm. financing the okay. big vision your hobby is to make the money so <laughs> there's really no point in having emotional things drive your decisions than mm -hmm. making the, the, the money yeah. and growing big and leaving a legacy behind so that's why you're in business <laughs> yes. okay. maybe you maybe we should focus on the legacy thing before because then when we come back we do financing the big vision mm -hmm. because I, I i don't think she's realized what she's achieved mm -hmm. and so if you tie to the big legacy mm -hmm. And you were asking a question at some point. Mm -hmm. 
So, so I wanted you to like, in the long run, you want a name or you want a business that will live after you. Yes. And you want a business that will come to everybody's mind whenever they think of going to buy groceries. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in doing that, you need to put up some structures that would, it could be, that would always create that image and give you that brand equity mm -hmm. of uh, if I'm going to shop, then I come to you first. If I, don't, if I don't get to you, then I'll think of other alternatives. For instance, um, convenience, as you said, is mm -hmm. the biggest thing to sell. Yeah. And to sell that, look at wh what it costs to go to Medina markets and all those things. Push that agenda big and okay. let's move on. So if, if you got a job offer from a big bank oh, okay. tomorrow, head of sales and marketing, would you... She's already shaking her head before <laughs> I will take it. You'd rather do this? Yes. So we're in business. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to go on a break. And when we come back, we really, really need to talk about getting these trucks, financing the big <laughs> vision of Big Sam's market. So please stay with us. And we'll be back very shortly. Welcome back, viewers. We're still talking to Elsie of Big Sam's market. And we're talking about how you can sit in your home and get healthy food stuff in a very affordable and convenient manner. And that's the big vision of Big Sam's Market, to be supplying all of us in our homes. And we've talked a bit about some of her challenges, and I think we've, we've made a lot of progress. And if you're sitting at home, this could have been you, but you didn't send us a one-minute video telling us what your challenge was. So don't forget, if you have any business challenges or you want to be sitting here, and we're giving you support and um, giving you guidance in your business. Send a one-minute video to our WhatsApp number, 026-300-5055, and we'll be very happy to help you. So, Elsie, now we have a big vision. Yes. Now, the next thing is how are we going to finance this vision? How are we going to buy those trucks? So, Frank, Good. help thank us. You. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, tell us, how did you finance the business to get to where it is now? How did you buy of equipment? How did you finance the What, what equipment do you have now? Now we have a big fridge. We mm -hmm. have not too big, but okay. it's okay. big for us. <laughs> 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 we have a big freezer. Mm -hmm. We have an in-house blender. Mm -hmm. We have some few equipment, like let's say a sink. We didn't have a sink. Now we have a sink so that we do and our clean washing and cleaning and, and everything. Mm -hmm. And how did you finance all those things? So when I started, it was from my own savings. Okay. And I had a fridge from school. So okay. that's what <laughs> I did, a tabletop fridge. Okay. So my your parents actually have equity in this business because they <laughs> bought that fridge. <laughs> and my mom gave me this old freezer. Okay. It was so old. Mm. But we used it mm. then till we, our first freezer that we bought, mm. we actually got this. 5,000 support from LAX. There was okay. a challenge okay. that I participated in. Okay. So we used that money to buy our first brand new freezer. Oh, great. Yes, and then we bought a fridge, okay. a small fridge okay. too. And then after that, we've been, in, we've been financing it through um, like money. The I want to talk about the loan. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's hear about the money. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with financing, mostly it's me. Mm -hmm and refinancing into the business, the okay. profit that we make, mm -hmm. then we go back. Mm -hmm. I, I remember trying to go for a loan mm -hmm. during the lockdown because we got this big contract. Mm -hmm. I went to the bank and mm -hmm. what they said, I got so confused. You wanted the bank to I finance the contract? I, did, I had never tried it before. Okay. So I was like, oh, we need this money very well. And it was a big business mm -hmm. and we had to pre-finance. Okay. I went there, they mentioned the money, I was like, okay. What kind I of big thought. business? Why did you have to pre-finance? It was... Um, so they were shopping for their staff mm -hmm. okay. during the lockdown. So we would oh. deliver to oh. their staff. Okay. Yes. And, it and was they wanted you to pre-finance that? Yes. It was, it was almost 20000 mm -hmm. okay. And it was uh, the first time we had gotten an order like that. Okay. And you have to pre-finance. They'll pay you after two weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we didn't have the money. Okay. So we had to, wanted to go to the bank mm -hmm. because we save with mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. But the terms, and it didn't even, the money they were going to give to us won't even reach half. So we just went to family and friends, okay. got the money, and paid them right after we got the money okay. from the people. That's oh, very okay. trustworthy. Okay. That's good. The thing you also need to understand <coughs> is that 
this is business. Yes. There's no point sitting there as the emperor over a mm -hmm. small mm -hmm. business because you want to be 100% mm -hmm. owner. Rather than releasing some of it, having external input and external financing so you can grow this bigger. Some the I think the message we're trying to tell <coughs> sometimes to finance your dreams, you need to let you go of some control. Yeah. Yeah. And it usually creates, a, usually, depending on the structures, a better business. But mm -hmm. that's a whole different mm -hmm. discussion. So um, the big business or the big company is the idea. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind having mm -hmm. an investor mm -hmm. okay. and having given some of the shares. That's, I don't mind at all. Because mm -hmm. it has to, it has, when you want to reach the, like the businesses I said where my, I was looking up to yes. when I started, these are big businesses and they are not owned by one person. Mm -hmm. There are lots of people with shares and I would gladly go with them. But okay. for now, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to give majority. Okay. Because okay. when you are building a business, I guess you this want thing to drive the vision. The, uh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have totally the vision. With you. There's the money, but the vision drives it. You can get all the money, like the 300,000. And I don't know what to do with it, with it. Before I know, the business has collapsed. And there was, there was a grocery delivery service before me. Mm -hmm. I remember when I started, just a month before we uh, after we started, I told my boss, I feel someone is watching me. Mm -hmm. A month into it, the person called me and said, you know what, I think we should partner. Several times he came, I said, no, I don't understand it. I can't go with this. Mm -hmm. And now, at a point, we actually had to do their deliveries for them and pretend it's them. Because they couldn't... Yes, and now they don't exist anymore. And they have all the, they had an app, they had a website, they had everything. Maybe they grew too fast. I get you. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes me know don't that worry, we'll I have to. put a higher value on your <laughs> sweater quickly. <laughs> so so, so, so let's, yeah. let's look at other financing options other than equity. Yeah, but so I think the point so was to show you that mm -hmm. there are so many yeah. options. So there are so many options, like she rightly said. So you may, someone can give you a loan that is not going to take control from you. But probably the loan should be targeted at specific projects. So yes. it could be equipment financing. So the, she buys you, let's say, a car, the car, the trucks mm -hmm. that you need. Okay, and then in case things are going bad, at least she has that security to over, yes. the, over the truck. Mm -hmm. Now you use the truck to run the business and then you pay interest based on the price mm -hmm. of the bank. In which case, they are not giving the money to you and then you get confused and you do things. So. Mm -hmm. You must first start with a business plan. Okay. So if I have this investment of 300,000, I need to buy three, four trucks. Mm -hmm. I need to get this uh, number of people, employees. I need to buy, get this number of, um, what do you call it, fridges. I may need to have my own set of, let's say, motor vehicles. You know, so once you have the plan such that and you may need to even improve your website, yes. yeah, right? Or get a central yeah. website so people can go there and so be placing orders, all those. So that your system, once you know that the money is coming in is for this investment, okay? Then what will be left is how you manage the business to be sure that you'll be able to pay that interest mm -hmm. for that uh, investment. So you, as you grow, as you have like four or five trucks in the city delivering things, you, your role then doesn't even become ordering goods, but mm -hmm. it's to make sure that people are not stealing your fence. When they sell the goods, cash uh, comes to you. Mm -hmm. When an order is placed, it, it gets delivered to the right place. Mm -hmm. It's not because someone who is going to deliver the goods deliver diverses mm -hmm. and now the customer comes to you and things like that. So growing break can come with it, that risk and you need the expertise needed to be able to do that. And I'm happy you always kept saying that Things you don't understand, you're a bit careful. Yes, yeah. But doesn't mean you have to do all those things yourself. Look yes. for people Get that, can, that, that can help you. Because like the numbers you put are throwing around, if I sit here and I look at your numbers, I think that to expand to all those things, you need to get into about 300,000. Okay. okay <laughs> but it has to be managed properly. Yes. She has to scale up. Scale up properly. Properly mm. and you have to put in controls to avoid theft and losses yes. and all those Even things. Even the fuel stealing. <laughs> <laughs> fuel stealing. <laughs> and no, when you are big it's, it's a different mm -hmm. ball game. Okay. Because you may have look you may have maybe four uh, warehouses mm -hmm. or whatever. My worry and is that at some point and I love the fact that she's driving the vision, she knows what she's doing. But my worry is also that at some point 
the business is going to grow bigger than her and it's either she opens up mm -hmm. or she would um yeah. you'll smother the business because you're not letting it and I, a competitor will come in and mm -hmm. take advantage yeah. of that finance that's, and that's actually ahead. my worry mm -hmm. so that's why when you are opening up in your case then you want your best option will be a venture capital institution sometimes they come on board with some expertise okay. for example some of the venture capital people can make sure that they manage your cu the customer end so they are it people mm -hmm. who give you the websites and the customer end is they give you all the technical support, support you, need. you need and okay. help you grow and then when it's time they exit okay. the exit okay i think so we need now need to go to coach's corner because yeah. um elsie has a, she's written a lot of notes <laughs> <so>. <laughs> she needs a coach to just ginger you up a bit so mm -hmm. we'll go to coach's corner and when we come back from coach's corner we'll try and wrap this up Hello, welcome to Coach's Corner on Business Compass. As always, I am Coach Bell. Our business knowledge tonight is borrowed from American rap superstar Jay-Z's success module. Jay-Z says, hustle. Have an empire state of mind. He sees music as his passion and an excellent way to express himself. But his overall mentality is towards building an empire. He's owned restaurants, clothing companies, bars, record labels, and much more. This is a state of mind that every entrepreneur should have. Don't wait until you have the tools. Work leads to growth, which leads to income, which leads to investment with the correct equipment, which then leads to more growth and so on. Have a plan. Create a proper and official business plan to make sure you know exactly what the plan is before jumping into things. An idea could strike at any time. Be prepared to write it down. Could be on your phone, a notepad, but put it somewhere. Ignore trends. Trends, most noticeably in fashion, don't last for very long. So if you end up copying a trend in your business, the chances are you won't last very long. Don't take your eyes off the prize. Be laser focused on your ultimate goal, which is building your empire, one small business at a time. In the words of Jay-Z, and I quote, I believe that the energy you put out in the world, you get back, end of quote. So what are you putting out in the world? Thank you for watching and see you soon. Thank you, Coach Bell, and welcome back, viewers, from Coach's Corner. We're still here with Miss Elsie of Big Sam's Market, Adja Agubloshi. <laughs> so, we've gone through a lot. Yes. Financing, giving up some control, customer service, the need for a business plan, a bigger vision, um, how you need to get customer testimonials. How do you feel? Um, I'm happy I came. Like... I, I want to find a way that's more than happy. <laughs> okay. that, uh, we're in a good place then. <laughs> um, we're going to give you a truck, but um, Petra, uh. you decide. <laughs> um, so I think we should give her vision, and that's because when she started talking about her business, even though I'm sure she has it somewhere in she her mind. Goals. Yes, she had goals. Um, she wasn't articulating that big vision very, very clearly. So we want to remind mm. her. That this truck looks stretch. like it's going straight to Agogulu. <laughs> 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 <Yes, actually. laughs> Let me see if it will roll. Yeah. 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 Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So my thing is, <coughs> Petra, okay, you do your closing and then <coughs> I'll do my closing. So I'll say that um, focus on what you want to achieve. You've, you've articulated it very nicely. I, I feel that one of the very good things you have is your personal e um, equity. So yeah. you, you come across as somebody who has very <coughs> high integrity levels, and that's important for the business you're doing. So continue to project that. Um, let people yeah. trust you. Let them trust in the fact that you're giving them the best quality, good prices, convenience, all of that, and project, yeah. project that brand. And yeah. I'm sure that you would achieve the very wonderful um, vision and the goals that you set out for yourself. Thank you. Fran? Yeah, thank you. So look, because I have numbers, I'm happy. <laughs> and I <laughs> think you are bigger than you think. You probably can be a good, but you seem to be comfortable <laughs> with silver. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time you go for the big 
big risk okay. and grab it because the, the, the sector you are serving, everybody needs it. And people will want to avoid the inconvenience of going to the market. So think of partnering with somebody uh, to give you the financing you need. Okay. And if you need help, you can call on the one of us in terms of negotiating some okay. of your things that you need to make Even sure understanding that... understanding. Yeah, yeah, understanding those things to make sure that you are not shortchanged with, with what you have done so far. But okay. I think your prospects are very good. Fantastic. Thank you. I think they've said everything I needed to say. Um, you are such a caring person that you are thinking more about the customer angle, about you've spent all your... spent. Buy food before you spend all your money. Just focus on what you are selling to the customer, what you're offering them. And like Petra said, I think that your business model is easy to replicate. But what they cannot replicate is actually what has made you successful, and that's you. Like she said, your personal equity. Mm -hmm. It's your character, is your authenticity, is your integrity. And we need to see more of that. So. It's the personality that is selling us this convenience that is the key success factor. And I think we want you to project that more. And Frank said it. You are, you are gold, but you are pretending to be silver. Let go. Just unleash that big vision. And I know you're going to do great things. And it's been such a pleasure to have you. And I know you're going to come back because we would need to finance this big vision. And we need to track this and see how it's going. But... You're a phenomenal businesswoman, and thank I can't you. wait to see what the future holds. Thank you. So, th viewers, if we thank you for joining us this evening. I'm sure you've enjoyed the journey to Agbogloshi Market, just mm -hmm. like we have. It's been a great learning experience, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Remember that this is the GPS for your business. We actually help you find yourself in that journey to being a business person. And if you want to appear on the show, please send... Um, a WhatsApp video to 026-300-5055. My name is Charlotte Osei, and this was produced by Fiducia Services Limited, and I am very grateful that Mrs. Petra Samwa and Mr. Frank Abri could join me today. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. It's been an interactive and very educating session, and one, like some of the things I'm going to take away is to focus, like they said, um, the vision is big. There's the big vision, and it has to be financed. It had there has to be like a good structure to make it happen, and that I should open up, you know, open up to more people, partnership, and then getting more. It doesn't matter if there are more people helping you so that you achieve more. You don't have to do everything yourself. I'm Petra and today's marketing tip is know your customer. It's very important that as you design your product or your service, you're clear on who your customer is. Not everyone is your customer. And so define who your customer is, profile your customer, be sure about who they are, what their lifestyles is, how old they are, what they do, so that you can properly meet their needs. I'll catch you later.